Johnny, lastly, we've got the circuit board. Circuit board, that is, oh, right there. You're gonna have to be quicker than that one, Johnny. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Comics Corner. I am Mike, here with, with Mike. Uh, uh, unfortunately, Johnny is not here today. Uh, he had to leave a little bit early, um, had some car troubles. Um, so I guess for those of you who came here for uh, <laughs> for those of you who came from Wolverine Johnny, I've got boy, <laughs> am I gonna tell you the next two hours are gonna be perfect for you? But um, yeah, big up in the chat wherever Johnny is. I'm sure he's looking down upon us and smiling. Um, but point being, uh, the Flashpoint uh, book report, uh, book club book uh, review and. Uh, recap will be likely tomorrow. Um, he should be able to come on by tomorrow, so tomorrow at uh, 8 p.m. But in his stead, I got nothing to do for the next two hours. Um, <laughs> so uh, what I did was uh, I went home and I got just a handful of nonsense um, because, hey, it's it, we, we birthday boys streaming now. Um, so without, without uh, Flashpoint to talk about, or what the next book is going to be. Uh, maybe maybe we'll tease it at the end here. But uh, I went home. I had a bunch of nonsense. Hey, y'all remember um, look and find books? You look and then you find stuff. Uh, I've got, you know, we got Wolverine right here. You know, big claws. Wait a minute. Is that Johnny? Um, but, you know, we've got stuff like, hey, here's Magneto's flag. Oh, real quick. Nice try. You're going to have to wake up pretty early in the morning to slip back slip past a huge M flag by me. Um, but I've got a bunch of nonsense like that. I've got a bunch of different books and stuff to show off to. Um, I've got I've got one other option too is how do y'all feel about choose your own adventure books? Um, in fact here let's get that out of the way now. If that's something that we're interested in doing here uh, I was, uh, I, I talked about it on a previous stream, it was probably the Pokemon stream. Um, I went out and I got a bunch of these Choose Your Own Adventure books, because, uh, you know, what better way to have some fun than by choosing your, oh, look and find, it's going to have to go now. Um, so I've got a handful of these. Uh, I haven't really looked at any of them. I, you know, because that would spoil the fun if I knew what the, how the adventure ends. Um, <laughs> not to influence the, the voting at all, but get a load of that kid. Uh, my choice would probably be this because I don't know the idea of like a weird, like a lot of these like you'll see like all right fantasy 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 weird like well current day modern day um, you know. That's a car. That's a kid. They, they, I spoilers. It takes place in school. I, I peeked a little bit in, into this one, but um, I'm curious what the hell this one is about. Um, but again, not to influence any any choices here. But uh, to be fair, honestly, this one definitely caught my eye. I mean, look at that guy. I'm we're keep the ancient king. I there's a lot going on here that has me intrigued. I guess we're playing as a woman though, so you know, I don't know. Um, but I was thinking maybe that might be an option. Some of these obviously are a little bit like thicker than others. Like that's a that's a proper book there. Like I don't know how many pages we're gonna have to get through of me like having difficulties reading before we actually get to, to make a choice. And then oops, the diamond turned to dust, and now we're dead because skeletons. Um, but if you guys want to do uh, uh, choose your own adventure, let me know. I'm definitely down. Uh, also, I guess we'll see. Um, Real quick, what's up, Wing? Uh, Ding, what's up, uh, Vic? Uh, if you guys are in Twitch, to my knowledge, Twitch has the the uh, the, the smallest delay. Um, if you're watching on Facebook, it might be a little bit more of a delay, especially when you get to the questions or, or the choices. But I figure, you know, 
you know, did we find the ruby? Go to page 66. Did we uh, uh, choose the dark hole? Go to 68. Probably going to 68. Um, but, you know, point being, we'll, we'll get to the questions uh, or the choices. Uh, I could ask them, and then we could, you know, wait and see what the, the majority vote is. Uh, I guess if there's a tie, I'll, I'll help break the tie. Again, I don't really want to influence them too much because I'm curious. I'm just along for the ride. Um, but, yeah, how about this? Uh, of this this display here, let me know if any of them jump out. That one is super endless. We got Keep the Ancient King. We've got The Warlock of Firetop Mountain. Great name. Uh, Secret of the Sphinx. Zork, the Cavern of Doom, uh, Raid on Nightmare Castle, and again, you know, not to, not to influence the vote here, but my, my favorite here, Comic Crash, because again, <laughs> I assume that that's us. Like, we're, we're, I think we're playing as a kid in this one. Hopefully that's not us, because if that's us, then fellas, we've, <laughs> we've made a wrong choice somewhere. Um, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm definitely interested in seeing what people want to do. Uh, right now we got... <laughs> Exactly. I knew, I knew my boy Chuck in the chat would be all about Comet Crash. Um, but it looks like uh, we got Firetop and Comet Crash again. Firetop, like this one is Steve Jackson. So there we go. We got, we got some names to it. It's a Steve Jackson and Jan Livingstone joint. A hot collabo. Um, <laughs> hell yeah, here we go. These are the boys that we got on our side here. Um, but this one like looks like it's like a proper, like that's, there's some heft to that. Whereas this one is a little bit thinner. Man, we got we got a three-way tie. All right, so right now we've got we got Zork, we got uh, Firetop, and we got Comet Crash. Nobody going for my my. This one's gonna be uh, on my own time, I think. Look at <laughs> look at this guy. Oh man. What happens when you enter a fantasy forest book? You become the hero. You must choose a path to follow, but be warned, anything can happen. Will you be attacked by fierce monsters? Will you be trapped by an evil wizard's magic spell? Or can you outsmart them all? Turn the page to find out. Only you can decide where the adventure will lead. When your story ends, go back to the beginning and choose a different path. Read Keep of the Ancient King again and again for new adventures. So man, look at that. We got, we got value here in the King of the Ancient, uh, Keep of the Ancient King. But uh, I'm gonna take that one out. Uh, what else, super endless quest. Uh, I mean, Sick mustache, like I, you know, hopefully we don't have to make a choice on if we cut that mustache or not, because I certainly would say no. That's that's a keeper. Come on, find it. There we go. Hell yeah, like that is a, that's a squad right there. Like we got hippies roaming like the lot of a dead show uh, going on right here. But that one, I'm taking out of the uh, taking out of the running. Yeah, the dead eyes. You do not want to. <laughs> Sorry, Vic. Two women. I guess they're going they're going to the side here. Um, so right now it is. Firetop, Zork, and Comet Crash. Again, uh, I'm just going to show the, the ones that didn't make the, the original cut right here. Uh, we got this dude, Secret of the Ancient, uh, sorry, Secret of the Sphinx. He is, I, I guess we're playing a Crusader there uh, with a little little dirk to, to stab these these bad boys. Uh, yeah, you're, you're a young page on the way to the uh, Crusade, so we'll find out what happened to that another time. We got Raid on Nightmare Castle. You are Coil, a young cleric? Is that a name? About to set off on an important mission to the dreaded Nightmare Castle. Not today, never no, not. Oh man, so we, we got looks like we looks like it might be Zork, but so as we're as we're cutting it down here. Oh, what's that, Johnny? Johnny says Comet Crash. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Um, <laughs> these guys. All right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, so we got it down to uh, to Comet Crash and Zork. Do you want me to just flip a coin? Where's my... Uh... Hold on now. See, the problem with just being me here is I've got to run around here. I've got to find... Oh, no, where did it go? Oh, no. Rice. We've got the incorrect coin. No Grookey Gang right here. I don't know what happened to it. Let me move my Grookey Gang coin and... Yeah, we'll have to just make do with that. Um, I know we're gonna have to find that Grookey coin, maybe another time, but uh, one last quick check here. Is it under the chopsticks that I have here? The magic card? Is it under the 
Infinity Gauntlet Love Letter. Nope, it wasn't there. Um, so we'll just use this coin. How about this? Uh, heads, Zork. Tails, Comet Crash. During your summer internship at Kimball Science Observatory, you discover a comet headed straight for where your family lives. Oh no, my family! Uh, it's possible the comet will just graze Earth's atmosphere, but you know there's a good chance the comet will either strike the city of Los Angeles or crash into the Pacific Ocean, causing an enormous tidal wave to sweep over the entire coast of Southern California. And we said no to this? My family is at danger. Yeah, my comet. All right, it's happening next time. All right, but, you know, I leave it up to fate. Score Bunny was with us. If, if it was Grookey, it would have definitely been the, uh, the Comet Chase. So I'm going to blame the dice, but, you know, here we are. Dice. Uh, uh, a fabulous, let me see, what we got? A fabulous kingdom in which you decide what happens with wizards, elves, a giant toad, Grum the Incredible, ugly what oh the incredibly ugly and an adventure on every page and you decide the outcome you is in italic so it's you decide it uh based on the most popular computer game of fantasy adventure uh number three the cavern of doom a newly discovered underground realm has caused great trouble and grief for siovar the ruler of the land the explorers and adventurers who enter uh it have never been seen again only you can rescue them and uncover the underground realm's vast riches. Uh, where did I find these, Charlie? Uh, you know, I got my ways. Uh, there may or may not be stores that sometimes have these. Maybe yard sales, you know. Maybe maybe one of these I might have had already. We'll never know. Also, real quick, on, on theme and on flavor here, we're doing fantasy. You know, you know who's probably in the Cavern of Dooms? Skeleton Warriors. Six bad-to-the-bone cards. It's still so good. The joke is, I've been thinking about this all week, so <laughs> I was going to open these regardless. Uh, so I have to, let me crack these bad boys open here. Uh, I'm looking up the footage from Zork on the computer game. It's literally the command prompt phone. Yeah, Zork was a, a pretty, uh, uh, can you put the song on? I don't know what song you want me to do. Probably not. Uh, I, oh. Oh. Is it bad to the bone? Let me click this URL here. <laughs> Wait. Whoa, this was a TV show? Skeleton Warriors opening. Oh, man. All right, that, that a whole other realm has opened. Uh, yeah, that's if you're at home, check that out. Otherwise, I had no idea what these were. I thought these were just straight up just some, some skeleton warriors. All right, so we've got... He'll be back, it says. That seems like a, like a veiled threat. Um, creature rose out of bubbling lava. Oops, there we go. Just a, a sweet skeleton in lava. Uh, we've got, what does it say? Dark, dark dreams. Check out this sweet, like, deviant art. Hell yeah, it's a, a skeleton just in the sky. Got sweet info there. Hold on now. Crystal Overlord. Oh, hold on. That that next one looks really good. I got a dude on a sweet motorcycle with a skull with spikes going through the eyes. And he's, is he shooting? No, he's, his hand is just firing off a sweet laser. He's not even looking at where he's shooting. The confidence. This is like Johnny here. I know we've got Johnny over here. Johnny over here. But I, I, I feel like this is definitely a, a dark... Yeah, look at that. Like that's not perspective, Charlie. That's just that's just him being swole. Like it's it it gets like real Popeye in the middle there. I'm not liking that at all. But that that sick flow that he's got going on there. Uh, I can't believe I bought bits to throw at the stream. I, there's no better time. You're you're also bit leader right now, Vic. Uh, if you keep throwing a few more at us, you might be uh, you might beat Ding. Yeah, he does look like Val Kilmer. <laughs> Buff fantasy Val Kilmer. Uh, I am really digging this dude, though. Dagger. If I if I ever had to play a character, this is me. So if this, if that last one was Johnny, this guy is definitely me. 
Here, let me. We got the Johnny and Mike stream going on right now. Look at how tall I am, though. Is Dagger okay? Probably not. Uh, right, Dami. He's just he's just holding his uh, holding his breath and holding that position. He's probably gonna be doing that for the next uh, hour and a half or so. Um, yeah, exactly, Charlie. That's that's the uh, the big theme. Have that playing right now. Um, <laughs> these two are definitely going aside because I'm going to be using these, I'm sure, at a later point because that is basically just Johnny and me in Dark Fantasy. And hold on, whoa, that is awesome. All right, we're, we'll save that one for last. I don't know who this dude is. This is Doctor Cyborn. Uh, you know, he's looking looking evil. I mean, probably got to be the bad guy of this of this realm. One, he's a doctor. Two, his name is Cyborn. Uh, for the br brilliant scientist, trusted servant. Uh, man, this the lore goes deep. I don't know how to tell you this. I'm gonna have to start watching the uh, whatever this Skeleton Warriors show is. But here it is. I think I think we got a good one here. We got Shriek. We got a weird like see-through card. It's a skeleton lady, and she's got a breastplate. I am digging everything that's going on right here. Uh, this one is getting added to the keep pile. Uh, right, Ami asked, where's Johnny? I know it's a, uh, I know it's a pick. Uh, Johnny isn't here uh, today. He couldn't make it. Well, he was here for a little bit. He had to leave early. Uh, Charlie, these ones, are, these ones are getting shot. Are you kidding me? Um, <laughs> what's up, Paul? Thanks for joining the madness. Uh, so again, for those of you who joined a little bit late, Johnny isn't here. Um, he had to leave a little bit early. Uh, so we will have our discussion of our discussion of Flashpoint. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll talk about Flashpoint probably tomorrow. I think he said to be able to make it tomorrow, uh, probably around 8 p.m. 8 p.m. to 10 again, like normal. Um, but in its in his stead, uh, I was here. I was bored. I've got nothing going on for the next couple hours. Uh, you know what I do got? I got a lot of nonsense. I got I got Choose Your Own Adventure books. I got cards. People like cards, apparently. Um, so I figured I may as well stick around, give us some something to do to pass the time here, uh, and look at some cards. We got we got some real winners. They were all sit. You know what? They were all pretty bad to the bone. We, they didn't lie on that on that front. Some a little bit more bad than others. Uh, the first, I mean, right out the gate, we had just a skeleton in lava. You know. Like, I, I don't know how it gets any better than that, but they somehow found a way to. Uh, <laughs> well, study up, Paul. You got you got one night to read Flashpoint, uh, because if when you do, everything you know will change in a flash. And to be fair, everything I did know changed in a flash because I don't really know a whole lot about the Flash. So we'll talk about that tomorrow, though. I don't want to. I don't want to cannibalize too much of that hot content. Um, <laughs> keep it down, Charlie. Uh, also, uh, like I said, I brought a bunch of just random books and stuff that I like from home. Uh, stuff that probably normally otherwise wouldn't have gotten too much uh, airtime on ours. Uh, you know who one of my favorite artists is? Uh, it's Rich Corbin. Uh, he did a lot of stuff for heavy metal, eerie, uh, creepy. He was just a good um, horror uh, artist. Uh, I had this sweet heavy metal magazine that uh, is a compilation of uh, the best of Richard Corbin from uh, Creepy and Eerie. Uh, woo. I mean, it's... All right. Mature audiences only. Uh, Richard Corbin uh, and a lot of this stuff is uh, a little bit more risque. You want to check out something sweet, Charlie. Wabam. You ever ridden a sweet lizard while looking buff as heck as a, you know, a hot lady just looks at, at you longingly? I haven't, but you know what? I with one day a man can hope. Also, bam! Limited five thousand copies. We got one right here. Fight me for it, kids. That man has no eyes. Yeah, Charlie's got no pupils. Uh, Johnny, wherever he is, is probably disapproving. But man, Richard Corbin had such great art. He had a lot of great coloring too. Like he uses a lot of like weird purples and just uh, uh, like seemingly unnatural lighting. Let me find uh, some. Check that out. Y'all ever seen a sweet skeleton? Uh, so I was probably gonna flip through this. This one had a few of um, some of my favorite uh, Richard Corbin stories in here, but I br I like how we started off with the Zark, and now I'm already like halfway across the uh, the continent here. But also, I, I brought that one because I knew I also had here at home or from home 
uh, some heavy metal cards. <laughs> Maybe something to look at in a little bit. But as promised, we had some Zork at the start of the, uh, the stream here. So, all right, let's see what we got here. She has an odd chin. Where are you getting all this? One, language, Charlie. Two, my house. I have a lot of weird stuff at my house. Um, like I said, I like weird stuff. I like our heavy metal magazine. I like cards, and I like choose your own adventure books, apparently. Let's see. Hell yeah. Like I said, uh, stick around. There's going to be more of that going on. I, I just want to kind of dip my toe into some of this uh, choose your own adventure stuff real quick here. Uh, let's see. Welcome to the Kingdom of Zork. You are bored. There's nothing on TV except some stupid reruns. Uh, you wander into your local bookstore and pick up the interesting book titled Zork the Cavern of Doom. Hold up. This is getting real, <laughs> it's getting real meta here. Are, is this part of it? Oh, hold on. Out the gate, some good choices. Uh, uh, as usual, you turn to the first page and begin a reading. Uh, this book is set in the magical land of Zork. Uh, where a new, incredibly rich underground realm has just been discovered. Dozens of adventurers have uh, entered the Cavern of Doom, but none have returned. Only you can save them. There are bad-tempered warlocks, huge diamonds, dragons, and a giant empire to explore. Uh, it looks like this book is good. Hey, I'll be the, I'll be the judge of that one, Zork. Uh, right out the gate here, we got two options. Uh, do you choose to save the kingdom? If so, uh, purchase the book and turn to page seven. Who says I purchased it? Uh, two, or do you choose to go home and watch reruns? Turn to the next page. I think I already know what people's choice is going to be, but uh, again, do we save the kingdom? Do we go home and watch reruns? To be fair, they don't really say, exactly, they don't say reruns of what. Uh, maybe it's something that I want to watch. Is it Simpsons? Yeah, I'll watch reruns of that. Frasier Friends, <laughs> exactly. That's, that's the real choice is... Which reruns do we want to watch? If it was Frasier, I am straight... Nah, I see why I'm bored if that was the case. Um, but yeah, are we going to save the kingdom or are we going to go home and watch reruns? I think I already know the answer. Everybody wants to watch reruns, so turn to the next page. In front of the TV, your eyelids slowly close. A strange sound fills the room. Suddenly, your eyes open. You realize you've been snoring. <laughs> you can't get that Zork book out of your mind, but the bookstore is already closed. Think again. Wouldn't it be wise to purchase the book now and return to page seven? This is some straight up like JRPG, like uh, uh, pretending that you had a choice in it at all. It's like, do you want to save the kingdom? Yes, no. You click no, and it's like, are you sure? Come on. Exactly. I'm getting railroaded right here. I, I, out the gate. I'm already upset at this. But turn to page seven. Oh, hell yeah. Some sweet art we got right here. Uh, this book is a work of fiction. All characters and events are portrayed in this book are fictional. Any resemblance to real people or incidents are purely coincidental. I mean, hold up. Like, out the, they told me that that was me in that. All right. Is this fantasy or what? These guys look pretty good. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'm trying to say no, but uh, eventually here we are back at, uh, back at the start. Let me try and get this. I don't know why the... Come on, focus. You had it. All right, whatever. Uh, it is the first cool day after a weekend-long summer heat wave. So June and Bill are taking the opportunity to bicycle to Lookout Point uh, in the hills outside of town. It's a favorite secret spot of theirs, and they come here often. As the sun reaches its zenith, they arrive to Lookout Point, a small plateau bordered on the side by rolling hills and the other side by a steep cliff. They sit down under the familiar hang overhanging rock, which offers some protection from the bright midday sun. The ledge of the cliff is just a few yards away. Neither of them speaks for a long while. Finally, June breaks the silence. You know what I've been thinking, Bill? Bill absentmindedly tosses a pebble over the edge of the cliff. I give up. What have you been thinking? It's been two months since our last adventure. That's funny. I've been thinking about the land of Zork all day also. To be fair, so have I. I've been thinking about this book all day. Uh, the kingdom of Zork is just a magical land far away and a land where Bill and June are known. Go to page eight. So I guess it's kind of unfortunate that uh, uh, we're joining these guys uh, three three adventures into this. I have no clue who Bill or uh, Jill are. Apparently they're well known. I don't even know what the land of Zork is, but we're just getting thrust into this. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. They're known as uh, 
Bivatar and Jiranda, a land ruled by their uncle, uh, Sayovar. Twice before, Bill and June have ventured there, once battling an evil Krill, a uh, would-be conqueror of Zork, and once saving Sayovar from the terrible wizard, Malifestro. Man, I gotta, I gotta find book two. Malifestro sounds like a pretty sweet dude. That's better than going underground for some Caverns of Doom, but who am I to judge? Bill reaches into his pocket and removes the Ring of Zork, the gateway to the land of Zork. Place <laughs> the Ring of Zork. Uh, <laughs> Comic Crash by Edward Peckard. <clears throat> Hold on. <laughs> Kids can't stop uh, reading these Choose Your Own Adventure stories. Uh, Alicia Bayer, age 11, says, Choose Your Own Adventures is the best thing that has ever come along since books themselves. <laughs> uh... Chris Brogan, age 13, says, I didn't read, read much before, but now I read my Choose Your Own Adventure, adventure books almost every night. Uh, Costa uh, Festa uh, says, uh, I love the control I have over what happens next. I mean, that's, I had no control. We're already here. I, this is what the chat wants. Uh, and then Brendan Davin says, uh, Choose Your Adventure books are so much fun to read and collect. I want them all. Uh, teachers like the series, too. We have read and reread, worn thin, loved loans, uh, bought for others, and donated to schools or libraries are Choose Your Own Adventure books. Choose Your Own Adventures and make reading more fun. I mean, to be fair. Yeah, exactly. I, have, I didn't have any control in that first book. I tried to just go home and read, uh, uh, watch reruns, but they wouldn't let me do that. Um, but here we are, Comic Crash. Warning! Do not read this book straight through from beginning to end. I like how we have to learn how to, how to do Choose Your Own Adventure books. Um, these pages contain many different adventurers, and you, have, uh, you may have, uh, after you discover a new... Hold up. I can't read already. Uh, you may... Oh, sorry. These pages contain many different adventures you may have after you discover a new comet while working at an observatory in Colorado. From time to time, as you read along, you'll have a chance to make a choice. Think carefully. What happens next is determined by your choices. After making your decision, follow the instructions to find out what happens next. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Do not, Charlie. Whatever you do, put the book down. Uh, but hold up. The comet you discovered is headed towards Earth. In fact, towards the area where you live. Uh, your own family is in special danger. Uh, there's a chance that, like the dinosaurs, all humanity could be wiped out. Panic rages throughout the country. But with your inside information, you can do something about it. If you are alert and courageous, if you make the right choices. Good luck. Uh, <laughs> look at these nerds. I wish I could stand like that as I just like awkwardly give somebody a handshake. Ah, uh, school's out for the summer. It's been quite a year. First, your family moved to Los Angeles. Then you won a $200 prize in a science contest. What, what the hell happened there? I, all right, hold up, Vic. You'll never catch me. I mean, if anything, I'm probably this, this dude in the, uh, the hat right there. You'll never catch me in a striped shirt like that. I could promise you that much. Um, on top of all that, you were invited to be a student intern for two weeks at the Kimball Observatory near Aspen, Colorado. That's where you're headed now. Your plane just landed at the Aspen Airport. Uh, walking through the gate, you glance at the letter of introduction you were uh, told to bring. Sam Lomax. Ugh, I don't like that name at all. Uh, a graduate student working at the observatory this summer will meet you. Okay, good. That's not us. I, I assume that's Sam Lomax. This has got to be us, right? Like, we're seeing his face. That's, that's me, not Sam. Uh, he's of medium height with curly black hair and will probably be wearing a Chicago Bulls cap. Oh, hell yeah. Are you our young astronomer? A voice calls. You look up. It's him, all right. Sam? That's my handle, he answers. Welcome to Colorado. Handle? Ah. Oh. Wait, that's his actual name. That's not a handle. Uh, he shakes your hand and leads you out to the parking lot of the, obser uh, to the observatory van. He opens the back door, takes your backpack, and slings it in. You must have a lot of gear in there, he says. They told us to be prepared for overnight camping, you say. What? Page six. 
<clears throat> Alright, we got a long way to go before we make any choices. Uh, uh, da -da 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 -da. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't, I'm getting Sam. So page six is where the real choice actually begins. After the president's speech, you and your family discuss what to do. You have, a lot, uh, you have a better sense of whether the comet will crash than any of us, your father says. Do you think we should stay here or visit Aunt Libby in the mountains? Uh, it's a tough question. By tomorrow, the space shuttle should have, been, uh, should have fired its missile and diverted the comet from its course. Besides, it seems almost unpatriotic to leave after the president uh, has urged everyone to stay home. On the other hand, you suspect that the president isn't as sure of what will happen as he says. If the comet hits Pacific, even hundreds or, of, or thousands of miles away, a tidal wave may sweep right over your house. Uh, if you advise heading for the mountains, turn to page 91. If you advise waiting to see if the missile firing was successful, page 108. So are we heading to the mountains like cowards, unpatriotic cowards, or are we going to do our due diligence as Americans and wait and to see if the missile firing was successful? We'll give people a second here to think. So again, 91 is head for the mountains. Uh, 108 is to wait and see what the missile does. Yeah, Ding is completely right. Uh, at least uh, in Zork, we were kind of making choices. Well, choices uh, out the gate. Here, I would have had to have read like six pages before I even get to a choice. Like, I, we could fill in the blanks, right? The uh, comet heading towards us. The president apparently had a speech. I guess they're firing missiles at it because, of course, we would be. Um, and now, I mean, Johnny looks like he, he came out of the mountains there. I mean, uh, you know, that's, that's where... Uh, <laughs> what if your aunt is a Yeti? All right, so right now I'm seeing uh, 91, 91, people talking about mountains. Uh, let's find out, shall we? <clears throat> I think we better get out of here by early morning and head for the mountains. Uh, you tell your parents, hold up. Uh, I think it was 103. All right, we'll see what our aunt says. Uh, I think we better get out of here and uh, by early morning and head for the mountains, you tell your parents. Uh, all right, I'll call your aunt and make sure it's all right for us to stay there. It takes several hours for everybody to pack, uh, then you turn in. The next morning, you're off at dawn by traveling in heavy traffic uh, most of the way. You don't reach Aunt Libby's until mid-afternoon. She comes out to greet you uh, as your car pulls on the driveway. I'm so glad you're here, she says. Come on inside. They're going to have an important interview on TV. You hurry into the house, you drop your things on the floor, you follow Aunt Libby into the living room. On the TV set, uh, you get an aerial view of Los Angeles. The announcer reports how traffic on the freeways out of town is bumper to bumper or not moving at all. Uh, oh, you can see on the screen uh, how in some places there have been accidents and cars are backed up for miles. This is just as what the president feared, your mother says. Aunt Libby nods. Yes, and now it's happening. Panic. The traffic is so tied up that a lot of the people uh, will have to spend the night in the cars. And what's worse, there's looting going on and where people have left. I hope your house doesn't get broken into, you say. It's kind of a crummy thing to say, but all right, here we go. Uh, pay, turn to page 29. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. It won't matter if, uh, if a tidal wave hits, uh, your dad says. At least we took our most valuable possessions. Uh, Aunt Libby switches channels and stops the interview with an astronomer. Uh, well, Dr. Rappaport, the interview begins. Uh, you've heard the bad news. The shuttle didn't have any time to get in firing position. That was the only chance we had of diverting the comet, right? I'm afraid so, the astronomer replies. The comet will either pass by Earth or strike into some uh, uh, strike at some time before midnight in the eastern uh, time zone, earlier than farther west. The announcer's voice turns grave. What's your best estimate now? Is the comet going to miss us, as the president assured us? Dr. Rappaport's brow creases. His lips form a tight line. I wish I could reassure the people, he says, but it's a cl too close to call. Dr. Rappaport, if this comet hits, where will it hit? He nods as if he knew this would be the next question. Uh, I can't tell you precisely, but if the comet hits, uh, it will crash somewhere in the central part of North, America, North American continent or just west of its Pacific Ocean. Uh, the central part of North American uh, continent, that's mostly the United States. Thanks, Doc. Um, right. And if it lands in the ocean, uh, it may be just as bad because it will set up tidal waves for more than a thousand feet. Turn to page 106. 
Turn to page 71. Turn to page... Come on! Like, give me a choice. I don't want to run around here. 54... <laughs> All right. Uh, it's not looking too good for us, guys. Uh, we, we didn't really have any choice beyond this, so uh, here is the, the, uh, the fate that we all chose. Uh, a half an hour later, the news comes through. The comet passed over California, but crashed into the ocean 800 miles to the west. A tidal wave over a thousand feet high is spreading across the Pacific Ocean in all directions. The end. I, yeah, exactly, sure. Like, I, I'm some nerd that won a $200 contest, and now they're leaving it up to me. I, the president was right. We should have just stayed there. We were cowards. We ran to the mountains. Uh, unpatriotic. Communism never wins. You let this kid just you know, decide what was going to happen. It was our first mistake. All right. That's the end of that one. Uh, not nearly enough uh, choices as I would have liked. Here's a choice for you. Pack one, pack two. Uh, while I catch up with chat here. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Gotta, yeah, got to start over if we die, Ding. You're absolutely correct. Um, what happened to Johnny says uh, Halcyon first off. What's up Halcyon? Uh, Johnny uh, is doing just fine. I don't know what you're talking about I'm hearing a lot for number two going once going twice sold uh, So we've got here The adult illustrated fantasy magazine heavy metal. We've got trading cards by comic images Beautiful fantasy and science fiction artwork by some of the biggest names in the industry collected from past and present heavy metal uh, covers. We've got 10 cards per pack uh, out of a 90 card collection. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I might have to uh, uh, take a quick gander at some of these before uh, we decide. I mean, I think it's, you know, <laughs> quick gander, let me, uh, oh boy, um, I don't know, you tell me, Charlie, is this too hot for you? Come on, focus. Well, it's the lady with a gun. Uh, what do we got in the back here? Okay, cool, so it tells you what actual, uh, heavy metal magazine cover this is from. Uh, in case you ever need a hunt down, I'll say that one for later. Got this lady here with some sort of weird car washing apparatus. Can't really see, you can kind of see cleavage, that's, you know, that's what we're here for anyway, but it's some weird cleaning thing. That one's going on there. Any of these for sale? Uh, yeah, yeah. You tell me how much you want to pay for a lady sitting by uh, some foliage. Foliage? Foliage? Uh, I don't know who these dudes are, but that's looking pretty rough. It says Freak Show at the top. And it does not disappoint. Some weird looking dudes. <laughs> that one's pretty sweet, too. Uh, who is it that plays uh, Hermione? I don't know why that was my first uh, idea. Was It looked like uh, whoever that actress was Emma something or other please help me out in chat I have a bad brain and I'm trying to make this thing focus Emma Stone yep exactly thank you <laughs> Emma Watson is that a name I don't know this one's pretty dope though sweet lady on a crescent moon <laughs> thank you Alcyon yeah, like, to be fair, I have, like, a whole lot of uh, heavy metal comics at home. Uh, most of it is just for the cover uh, art like this. But, again, it is an anthology uh, magazine that's usually a lot of, like, dark fantasy, um, uh, erotica, um, just cool stuff. Uh, you get some weird fascist-looking dude right here. Um, I don't know. I'm a huge fan of heavy metal, so that's why I had a bunch of these uh, cards. And I've got the... Uh, 
Uh, the Richard Corbin box. Uh, I don't know. It depends on which cards you want, because some of these I might want. I mean, like, this one is pretty... This one might be a mic keeper. This one's going in the, the to keep pile. Come on, find it. It's right there. You can see the text. There we go. It's the lady, you know, being held tenderly by uh, a, a cyborg. You know, nothing wrong with that there. Oops, that's going in the mic pile. Uh, we got a sweet, uh, what's this damn name? Olivia. Uh, a Betty, Betty Page Olivia cover. Find it. Find it. It's right there. Eh, there we go. We've got, I think we've got still pins here of, of uh, Olivia's art. Uh, is there, I, I, I don't know. Can a robot consent? Uh, and then we got the sweet checklist here, too, in case you want to keep track of all the ones that we got, which I do. Um, pack number one or pack number two? Is he a Warforged? Yeah, probably. Uh, I mean, he definitely looks like it. Uh, Ding chose pack number three, so pack number one, pack number two, pack number three, baby. Uh, man, you know what I was thinking about all week? That stupid leprechaun elf. Uh, I am a huge fan of that one, and I, I feel like we might have we might have gotten gold uh, right out the gate um, with that one. Uh, for those of you who missed it, give me one second here. Last week we opened up a different elf pack. And we, man, I gotta really keep track of my nonsense here. It's getting real, uh, real messy in the mic drawer. Uh, we've got uh, the the newest winner of the prestigious uh, Pastimes Emoticon uh, award. I'm definitely, I'm gonna have to like cut out uh, his head and his hat, and I want to make that into an uh, emo emoji on here because if I make it his full body, it's it's too long. It's not really gonna fit in there. Um, but if we just have just his head with that stupid hat. Maybe I could get some of that uh, sweet, like, feathered uh, he's got in his cap. But either way, uh, the green top hat and Elf's dumb face, I think it's more than enough uh, to make it. Uh, how was the gum, Mike? Not very good. I, I actually I actually ate mine. Johnny was a... Uh, Johnny? Johnny was... Uh, he, he spit his out. He couldn't handle it. I thought he was supposed to be, uh, you know... I thought uh, Wolverine was, like, immune to diseases, but, but not Johnny. Johnny was very immune to it. Um... Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh, and we got we got multiple uh, pieces here, so you know, you tell me how much uh, three dollars per piece. Uh, does that sound good, Vic? All right, where were we? Let me see how these are divvied up. We got another. Oh, that's real race. What? Okay. All right, so. I was so hungry, I ate the first chapters of this book, he says. Uh, I don't know who's talking there. I don't know if it's the child. Because the child is the only one that has a book. I don't know. I guess Alf kind of has one. Everybody, all right, everybody's got a book. So <laughs> whoever is saying that, that could be anybody here. There's uh, uh, Your guess is as good as mine. Alfred J. Shumway. I, said, I forgot that that was... Ugh. Elf isn't even like prominently featured in so many of these. Uh, let's play cards. Everything's wild for guys from Melmac. Okay. But yeah, this lady's face just about sums it up. Let's see how tight of a shot we can get of that. Uh-huh. Big mood, lady. Big mood. Elf's Aunt Wilma became the first Shumway to attend college. I hope some hilarious situation didn't happen with that. Whoa, whoa, hold on. Hell yeah. Now this is what I want. Brother, can you spare a cat? Look at this just sweet, full art, hand. Man, we are getting some real good emoji uh, contenders here. Look at that, hand out, brother, can you spare a cat? <laughs> I know, that's an emote for you. Uh, 
Oops, that made it to the mic pile. Rock guitarist Nasty Shumway began his career in 1959 with his number one hit, I Love You More Than Moldy Cheese. Melmac fact. On Melmac, some food groups can jump rope. All right. Uh, let's hope that this card is better than that. Hold on, I'm liking this already. <laughs> see if you can see that. Come on, find it. It's right there. Is that a bow tie? Or am I being choked by, what does that say? A snake in formal wear. I, man. Why? I don't know why he's not finding it. It's not good. This guy's face is looking good, though. Hell yeah, there we go. All right. Is that a bow tie or am I being shaked by a snake in formal wear? I, what? Who, why is he talking at him, though? That guy's not even looking at Alf. He's looking at the word balloon. None of this makes sense. This certainly doesn't make sense. It's just a leg, I guess? A leg or an arm of Alf? Whoa! What? <laughs> Look at Al with the bowling ball bag. That shirt is way too big for him. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, yeah, yeah, Charlie. It's definitely one that you can put. Whoa, hold on. <gasps> it's a sticker. It says peel here. Oh my god. I this this part trashed. I don't care what the A part thing is. This right here, the sticker of Elf with his bowling ball bag. Let me see what that says. It says, uh, Tri Planet Area Champion. And then his shirt says Shumway. Brother, can you spare a cat? Oh, uh, Peel here. One day. One day we will. Uh, and then we've got, uh, again, the stupid, like, Builla baseball. I don't know. Sp Spively the rock click. Uh, we got some real knockoff, like, Garbage Pail Kids nonsense happening here. Uh, Melmac Orbiters, uh, Splivey the Rock Johnson. Uh, he is a uh, scup minder. I don't know what any of that means. That doesn't matter. We got what we came for. Uh, man. <laughs> oh, just, and you know what? I... I was just saying, I think that we struck gold with this, but then they hit us with the one-two combo of Bowling Elf and just Big Elf. Ah. Oh. The bummer is I got these in, like, some podunk shop, like, in southern Illinois, so I don't know where I'm going to find more of these, but I will find more of these. Don't worry. We've... Vic, we haven't even begun to peek. Because we haven't checked out what's going on in Heavy Metal Part 2. Uh, surely nothing as, as salacious as Alf in a uh, bowling ball uh, bowling uniform, but man. Let's see if we can find something at least. Uh, ooh, that might be a little, uh, a little much. I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> a little too hot for TV. Um, Alright. How do y'all feel about horror manga. What's up, webcam? Uh, this one is called uh, Fuan no Noten. I'll type it out in chat in a second here. Um, <clears throat> as we talked about with uh, with like Uzumaki and Junji Ito stuff, uh, I was a huge fan of, of this series. Um, I would usually see it online. Um, unfortunately, there's no printed version of it in English. The only way that I had to read it was uh, through websites. Um, Oh yeah, hell yeah. Give me one second, let me type it out for, for those who care in the chat, uh, if you want to check it out on your own too. <clears throat> uh, like I said, unfortunately uh, I had to get this one imported, um, uh, but I'm just a huge fan of it. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it is something, uh, seeds, seeds of Anxiety, Charlie, uh, is what uh, Fuan Notain uh, translates to. Um, but yeah, no, I, I was just a huge fan of it because basically what it is is it's um, an anthology horror thing. So it's like small, like uh, two-page um, little horror stories. Um, like I said, it's a bummer that the only way that I could get it in print was um, Japanese. But I was a huge fan of it, uh, reading it. Um, and there's, yeah, it, 
it was like I said, it's just small couple page things uh, that really stuck with me. Um, a lot of it is just like some weird, you know, Japanese horror stuff. Like we get, you know, like the usual kind of eyes peeking through doorways. Um, that's no good. Whatever's going on there can't be healthy. Um, yeah, and then a lot of it is just mostly like in the face. Nay. Uh, Fuan no, no Tane, is that, is that my uh, Japanese lesson for the day? Uh, let me see if I can find a couple more sweet. Um, <laughs> yeah, this one's always good. Uh, we got this dude checking out uh, this apartment building across the way from his. Like, what's that? There's somebody, somebody on the window there. Let me zoom in and enhance on that. Like, that can't be good. Uh, and then, oh, great, now he's just outside my window as I sleep. <sighs> Seeds of anxiety, indeed. Yeah, exactly, it's straight uh, rear window happening there. Um, let me see if I could find another one. I mean, this is just ripped from today's headlines, just a weird-looking dude wearing a face mask, so that one's not as, as scary anymore. Uh, oh, I guess unless if you find him, like, creeping over your shoulder as you're leaving. Um, again, it's, woof. Just small, like, two-page to four-page uh, horror stories that, um, like I said, when I was back in, like, 2007, uh, uh, when I was, like, first uh, learning about uh, Junji Ito, um, I came across this one. Uh, oh, yeah, this one we got sweet little uh, crossing guard happy dudes. Uh, but then the second that somebody walks past them, they give them the evil eyes, and uh, I'm pretty sure that they got ran over by a car, is what that, uh, it was like a car screeching and a thud, uh, when translated in English, so, yeah, there's some weird stuff going on in here. Again, mostly just ends on a lot of weird faces, but, I don't know, it did it for me, uh, like I said, this one is a three-part series, um, I've got the other ones at home, uh, a bummer that it's not in English, but a lot of these ones I just remember offhand anyway because I used to read it over and over again. Um, again, if you if you type it into uh, uh, into Google, you'll probably find them. Uh, yeah, Katamari Damacy, guys. Um, you'll probably find uh, uh, the English versions of it online too. Um, but yeah, no, I, mean, I was just a huge fan of that because. That and Junji Ito were a lot of my first uh, uh, foray into horror manga, and now I'm I'm here to stay. Still a fan of Ito, but um, every once in a while there's there's some side stuff like that. Again, I like the the uh, anthology ones because it's quick little like stories. You know, if they're hit or miss, you just kind of move on to the next one. Uh, but a lot of them still stuck with me uh, all these years. Uh, speaking of sticking to me, we got some yokai. How do y'all feel about ghosts? Uh, this was a book uh, yokai manga. Uh, that a friend got me for, I think it was my birthday, August 14th for those of you keeping track at home, um, but uh, he just got me this uh, when he was out in Japan, it was just this um, little Japanese horror book, uh, let's see if we can find that, um, again in Japanese so past me, but uh, at least the beginning tells you about uh, yokai. Uh, the ghost, it looks pretty sweet, um, but then we get into some cool, like, imagery of, like, a lot of the classic yokai, like, I know that that, um, oh boy, big guy with swastikas, that's definitely terrifying, um, but it's got a lot of the classic, uh, different Japanese ghosts, uh, like, I know that that one where it's, like, the umbrella, the umbrella with the eyes and the one leg that jumps at you, but, oh, yep, there we go. So, if you're a fan of any of that stuff, I just like it because of the sweet pictures. <sighs> See how big he was, though, Charlie? I mean, that's the intimidating part. Uh, plus, the swastikas were, like, uh, anti-clockwise? Clockwise? I forget what the, I forget what the battle is. But, uh, little, hold on now. Check out this sweet dude. This sweet little, like, raccoon tanuki sitting on his his little table there. Nothing terrifying there. Just a happy little guy. Oh, man. You hate to see that when you're out on a night stroll and you get surrounded by skeletons. 
Like that's that's a ghost story if I've ever seen one. They've got they've got their own banners too. Sometimes you just get dudes yelling at you. Yeah, Skeleton Warriors Part Two. I don't know if any of those guys have been in, have been in lava, but uh, and then I guess this just was like some uh, uh, long mural or at least a combination of pictures that went together. Looks like we got annotations about them, uh, but yeah, more interesting stuff from home. Hold up, is this dog doing okay? I don't know if that's, that's gotta be a ghost, right? That can't, that just can't be a regular dog, is it? <laughs> uh, what else we got here? Uh, got a, uh, <laughs> Muriel is my, uh, my, how y'all feel about Mr. Nipples? <laughs> or, uh, Detective Horse. Galloping into a store near you. The case of the pilfered filly. Philly? Yeah. Detective Horse must buck the naysayers and outwit criminal ring of cunning horse thieves. Can he save the pilfered finny before it's too late? Philly? Uh, you know. You can get some free gifts. Uh, and the guy's name is uh, Mr. Nipples. Naysayers. Yeah, oh yeah, don't worry. Oh, they, they didn't spell it the right way, but they, they know what they're doing. Naysayers. Uh, you know. Mr. Nipples. Uh, his nipples give him strength, it says. You know. Just comics that you have laying around in your house. Uh, let me see if I could find one here. We're getting kind of into the weeds. Uh, also a fan of what is he lifting and why? Uh, it's just a rock. I mean, you're gonna have to read. You're gonna have to read it to find out, Charlie, as to why he's lifting that rock and why he has all those nipples. But uh, they give him strength. <laughs> the way to talk to the masculinity. Too true, Vic. Um, let me get this out of here. Well, bam. Uh, this one I bought after. Uh, Charlie asking too many questions about him. We've already we've already moved on. We'll never know anything about who this kid is. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I don't know if any. Uh, I think this was before uh, Vic's time, uh, Vic and Ding's time. But I think Chuck was here for it uh, when we read uh, Marvels, uh, the Alex Ross. I forget who the writer was. Oops, um, the the story, the Marvel story, Marvels. Um, there was a character in here who was. <clears throat> uh, if you, I don't know, Charlie. Do you, do you remember when we read the Marvels one? Uh, by Alex Ross. It took place in like the 1950s. It was like early like Silver Age Marvel stuff from the perspective of the uh, photographer. His name escapes me out too. But there was a, a character that was a direct. Um, uh, the the little mutant girl. Uh, was a direct inspiration from this old, uh, what was this one? This old EC Comics, uh, Weird Science. Uh, I don't think I was there for that one. Okay. But I got this one just because I liked, um, I liked that one. It was a, it was a good book. But, uh, one of the characters, uh, from that story was basically, uh, they modeled it after, uh, this story from this book, uh, in which it's this young girl, uh, who is born deformed, um, and they kind of have to hide her from her parents because they didn't want uh, them to know how deformed she was. Uh, spoilers, uh, she falls on the spikes and dies. It's a pretty messed up story. Uh, this young girl who was, um, you know, deformed, hidden away from the world, hidden away from her parents, and uh, chased, and uh, yeah, she dies. Horror comics are sweet, but also pretty messed up, man. Surprise package. That's that's what this. I should just call this stream surprise package because that's basically what it was. Um, but no, sorry. I just I just had to show that one off because again, if anybody was here for um, uh, the Marvel stream, uh, I just wanted to show off that I found because uh, because uh, that's what it was. It's, I had the annotated edition, and they mentioned that this was the that was the story that that it was from. <laughs> Watch it, Vic. 
Um, but also I want to show it off because like I'm a fan of this kind of stuff, like these old um, uh, anthology books, like like weird science, um, usually more sci-fi related. But man, also just has great art. Um, again, like just some small little stories uh, that are hit or miss. But again, I was a huge, I was a fan of the actual story that that one that that girl was based off of uh, when I read it. But, um, but yeah, just more nonsense from from my house. Uh, what else do we got here? How do y'all feel about H.P. Lovecraft? If this man right here gave you a hot dog, would you eat it? The answer is yes. I mean, sure. As a, yeah, Vic, as a person, probably not the best. As a writer, pretty good. Um, look at that. He's got Cthulhu ketchup. Yeah, that's, that's no hot dog, all right. Um, this one right here, <clears throat> Graphics Classics, uh, 10 Tales of Horror, Death, Comedy, presented through uh, today's great illustrators. Um, this was a series that would collect, uh, usually thematically, uh, different um, stories. But again, my boy, let me see if I can get it here. Oops, let me knock into everything here. Richard Corbin, uh, I was a huge fan of his stuff. Uh, and then again, Richard Corbin, uh, he's a great artist. Um, man, speaking of great art, check out that handsome fellow. Um, this one is just uh, a handful of stories. Uh, we got some sweet Richard Corbin art. Um, they were collecting different, uh, like this one, for example, is uh, Herbert West Reanimator. Um, I think they had a couple, couple different artists' uh, takes on the stories. Um, Quest of Unknown Kadath, Shadow Out of Time. But again, just small little stories that are uh, related to the uh, Cthulhu myth mythos. Uh, by different artists, so you get, you know, you get a lot of different art styles. Uh, I'm just here for the Richard Corbin, to be honest. Um, but some neat stuff in this one that uh, I just wanted to show off. See? You doing all right there, sir? Not looking too good. That's Lovecraftian. Um, yeah, some sweet art. Man. Hell yeah. Uh, let me catch up here real quick. Uh, what's what's this ball cap say? Uh, it's the Arkham All Stars, Charlie. Yeah. I, I, also, to be fair, I'm a fan just of this cover. Um, they had a a version of this that was the same exact interior, but with a different cover. It was just um, it was just you know kind of a generic Cthulhu, um, almost like a lithograph, like a uh, uh, like a, a wood carving, which looked neat. But again, like I'm a fan of this one just because of all of the weird stuff that's going on there, the little background stuff, like there's the tentacle coming out of uh, his hot dog carts, you know, Arkham All-Stars. Uh, yeah. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, mildly unrelated, but I was interested in Lovecraft Media coming out soon. Let me click the link. Safe search off. Uh, Lovecraft count Country. What's that one about, uh, Vic, while I grab the next stuff? All right, <clears throat> and so these ones definitely can't show a whole lot of what's going on here, but um, uh, I was I was thinking about it because I mentioned uh, Johnny Ryan, uh, the writer slash artist, um, uh, when I was talking about uh, Prison Planet, uh, uh, or the one that I showed off. Um, oh, sorry, Prison Pit, uh, the one that I showed off uh, last week. That big uh, black book. I think I might still have it here somewhere, but um, uh, he was the guy who did some of this stuff. Uh, Start spreading the nuge, baby. We got Ted Nugent here with his hat. Um, this one is definitely a bit more uh, too hot for TV. Let me see if I can even find something to, to show. Um, but I don't know. I'm a fan of like weird like punk comics, uh, which this definitely is. Um, but again, definitely not the most uh, stream friendly. Even just trying to find one that doesn't have a lot of nudity uh, or murder or I mean, here, let me skim through this one again. This is the one that I, I was a fan of, um, The Miracle, just a weird... You can kind of see his art style here. You know. I hope that lady's doing all right. It's not looking too good. Uh, a weird Christmas tale happening here. 
uh, killer mother. Definitely a lot of weird stuff going on here. But uh, man, it's a bummer that that's like literally the only one that I could show on stream. Um, but yeah, no, it's cool art. Again, just like some weird punk stuff. Uh, but like, is that lady doing okay? Probably not. Um, and then Furry Trap by Josh Simmons. Um, adults only. I bet Johnny likes punk stuff. Yeah, like that's the thing is, this is the kind of stuff that uh, uh, I definitely suggest uh, the furry trap. Again, this one is um, a couple small stories. Uh, Josh Simmons, um, really cool art and atmosphere. Like even just this front cover. Uh, this one really runs the gamut too of weird, like psychosexual stuff, but also just weird punk stuff and small stories. Um, again, most of them too hot for TV, but. Uh, we get a good uh, Batman parody one going on here, uh, and let me see what else. It's like one again, one of the few pages that I could show here. This one's just called "A Hole Roommates," so sweet little Batman symbol. Uh, there was one story here that I was a real big fan of um, that starts off slow, but man, does it have a great ending. Uh, let me see here. It's right at the end. Hell yeah. It's called Demonwood. Just starts off as this small, you know, story about a guy who becomes a, uh, I believe he's a lumberjack or, or a construction worker. We just follow his life as he becomes uh, the new guy on, in town at the, the construction lot here. Just talk about his life. Uh, and then at the end here, one guy mentions that there's uh, there's some demons in this woods. Sun goes down. Somebody says hi. Is that a baby talking to me? Did that baby tell me hello? Uh, and yeah, once this character gets involved, it gets uh, real good. So, again, unfortunately cannot show that much on stream because... Uh, uh, yeah, no, Vic, I've definitely screen capped that and used that before. Let me see if I can get an actual crisp image of that. You coward, you disgusting failure. Man, this baby is so good. Um, let me see if I can find that, uh... There you go. Feel free to use for your own devices. Uh, hello. Um, yeah, no, this one is actually, again, really good. Um, it's like 10 stories in here um, that I'm hit or miss again, but uh, great art, great uh, change in tone between all of them, some from black and white to full color. Uh, the one, first one right out the gates, there's, there's a whole lot going on there that if you're not a fan of that, hey, I don't blame you, but uh, this one is just called... Uh, Jesus Christ, uh, in which Jesus Christ is uh, envisioned as this this towering uh, centaur that uh, kind of destroys the town. But again, if you're here for that, I definitely suggest Furry Trap. Uh, if you're not, I do not blame you. Um, but I think that's just about it. Uh, if anybody has any questions or what they want to do, um, <laughs> yeah, it's not how he's portrayed in the Bible. I don't know. It's been a while since I've read it, uh, so maybe. Um, but uh, if anybody has any questions um, or any suggestions, let me know. Uh, I was just here to pass the time. Again, reminder that uh, Johnny is not here today. Obviously, he's here in spirit, um, but not here in, in here. So we're not here to talk about uh, Flashpoint. Um, Sorry, let me move my elf cards to get flashpoints. Uh, we will be talking about that probably tomorrow at around 8 p.m. Uh, to give our, our review and recap of it. Um, so in the meantime, I was like, well, I'm here. I don't live too far from the store, so I went home and just grabbed a handful of stuff that I had sitting on, on my table. Um, so I figured I'd have a, a mic stream of here's a lot of the stuff that I like uh, that got me into reading comics. Um, Man, 
check out Richard Corbin's rendition of uh, The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. Quote The Raven. Nevermore. Um, again, Richard Corbin and his uh, horror art was is some of my favorite. Um, he has great colors, great like shading, great just line art too. Um, let me see if I could find. There's one uh, really cool short story that he has here. Um, but again, if there's any questions or, or stuff that you want to talk about, let me know. Uh, beyond that, I didn't have too much planned other than just, hey, check out the sweet stuff that I have sitting at home. Uh, this one's pretty sweet too. It was a uh, basically Cold War era comic of what if instead of nukes, uh, governments had secret underground bases uh, where their secret weapon was, uh, they were summoning demons. Spoiler alerts. Uh, we did it, boys. But man, yeah, like, like check out the colors there. Like the sweet, uh, the sweet demon that's taken over the mountain. Corbin did like a lot of like weird like purples and oranges and yellows as like background colors. Again, I uh, started this next one. Just, you know, non-traditional color work that I was always a fan of um, on top of just cool writing and cool, uh, cool art. Uh, oh yeah, this guy kind of gets uh, <clears throat> chopped up, but you know, that happens. Uh, so Warhammer mini painting on stream when? Uh, honestly, that was, that was just about to happen on this stream because uh, we got in, not Warhammer, but we got in uh, D&D, there was a uh, kind of like a tutorial painting, um, mini, mini painting uh, manticore set, uh, where it's just one big manticore and it comes with it like all the brushes, uh, uh, the colors, the paints. Um, and a tutorial on like, you know, here's the color that you do for the base, here's what a wash is, here's how to do the wash and stuff like that, that um, I was going to do uh, by myself on stream. But then uh, when I was grabbing it, I asked Royce, I'm like, Royce, would you rather we do this as um, in place of one of our um, our Gundam streams? Would you just want to like have both of us paint this? And she's like, yeah, sure. So I'm like, all right, well, that's cool, but uh, I'll just have to do my thing later. So Warhammer mini painting stream, definitely in the works. Uh, I'll have to see when Royce and I are next free to do that. Uh, normally we were doing that on, t on Sundays, but it sounds like Sunday we're going to be having a uh, pizza party here for uh, Johnny and myself. Uh, my birthday is the 14th. I turn 30. Woo! Uh, and Johnny's is uh, on the 20th, and he turns 24. So, you know, uh, we're going to be celebrating uh, all of the comic boys that pastimes uh, on Sunday. So if you want to come on by to the store, uh, Vic, I don't know when you said you guys would be by, but everybody come on by then. I'll be here all day. Uh, well, how about this, Vic? One of those ages is correct. Uh, will you guys guess? Give me five seconds. The miniature section is is right over, right right over there. Uh, I'm gonna grab the the Manticore one to show off um, what it might be in a future stream. Give me one second. So big ups to, to Vic, yeah, like they said, they're uh, starting a job soon, so that's why they mentioned um, what was supposed to be the Monday one is now going to be possibly Sunday. So again, I don't know if we're going to be streaming. Um, Johnny is in on Sundays um, working, uh, so he's usually doing uh, the Pastimes claim sales, which uh, if you guys care about comics and you haven't been checking it out, uh, pastimes.net slash social, or if that, uh, if that URL is too long, too difficult to uh, remember... Uh, and not as funny. You can also click on bigfollows.com if you want to go to our social page. Uh, on our Instagram, <clears throat> Johnny's been doing a great job of posting uh, either single comics, collections, um, bundles uh, that we are selling uh, at the store here. Uh, we've been doing claim sales where basically like he'll show off these comics, uh, some of them key issues, some of them just 
good issues that we like uh, at usually a discounted price, um, and it's basically first come first serve. You say, "Hey, I want that. I want that comic." Um, <clears throat> all right, there we go. I guess, like Charlie in the chat says, uh, somebody on eBay is saying five bucks for this. So this is now we are starting our own claim sale here. Five bucks. First person to claim it gets it. Um, but that's basically what he's been doing on Instagram is posting pictures of comics saying, hey, if you want it, let us know in the chat. Uh, first person to say they want it, they get it. Um, and then we usually do, we've had a lot of repeat customers or they get a bunch of stuff at once and it's just flat $5 shipping, so we send it out to them. So if you guys care or want to see about that, um, it is past, uh, sorry, Instagram.com slash pastimes online uh, or type in beagfollows.com and click on our Instagram link. That'll take you right there. Um, but this was the... Um, uh, the Nolzor's Marvelous Miniatures set. Uh, I don't know, I, Vic. Which, which of these did you want? Let me, let me lay them out again here. One day we'll talk. All right, fine. Real quick, while I have it here. Uh, so it's basically this paint night kick they call it, um, where you get the sweet unpainted miniatures, actually really big, and then on the inside here you get um, all these sweet uh, Vallejo uh, paints, Boris Vallejo. Um, Another great fantasy artist, right up there with uh, Frazetta and Corbin, in my opinion. But um, you get some sweet, uh, you get the miniature, you get uh, the paints, you get two brushes, you get one water pot. That's pretty sweet. Uh, pro tip, use the included plastic blister as a palette uh, for your paint. So there you go. Uh, they're like, hey, we gave you cardboard. You know, put the pan on the cardboard if you don't have uh, uh, something else to put in there. Vallejo paints. Um, 20 bucks, which honestly, that's not that bad. Like. A lot of these miniatures of this size are anywhere from like 12 to 15 to sometimes like $25 anyway. Um, so paying 20 bucks to get a sweet mini that you learn how to paint, uh, I guess in theory it's supposed to come out looking like this. Uh, we'll find out one of these days if Royce and I can get it looking that clean, that neat. Um, I would venture to guess no. Um, but that was going to be one of the options uh, for my streaming tonight, um, but otherwise, uh, I am definitely down to do that at a later date. Um, if anybody joined late, these are the sweet heavy metal cards that we got. Well, that I got. Uh, I got a sweet little checklist card. Uh, if you were to rate them, here is the top row. From there, we get the Emma Stone row. And then kind of the, you know, the meh, the dregs, the bottom. Uh, and then let's see. Since we've already got these bad boys open again, here was the pack number two. How do y'all feel about pterodactyls? Or dudes riding pterod... Whoa, there's like a sweet dead demon on the back. There's layers to this. This lady, I guess... A Yakuza? You could tell because she's got a sweet tattoo. Uh, let's see. This one's actually a pretty dope, dope cover. Uh, something, something. The Odyssey, the Iliad, Helen of Troy. That's a character, right, Charlie? My 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 Greek classics. Uh, I don't know what's going on here. Just a sweet lady rocking out on a guitar. You know, can't all be winners, but uh, let's see what else we got here. Whoa, speaking of winners, here's a sweet punk dude that's, I feel like this is Johnny, half punk, half tiger. He's got a, he's got a flail with like a morning star spike on there, and he's fighting off sweet little gabos because, you know what, sometimes you just got to kill gabos. Uh, or you could be a Red Sonia looking lady. Half <laughs> Garfield, yeah, exactly. Half punk, half Garfield. He loves lasagna, hates the establishment. Uh, here's Red Sonia riding a, I guess, some sort of weird cricket bug, fighting the snake, as you are wont to see in sweet fantasy art. Uh, it doesn't have to make sense, just has to be hot ladies and weird. Creatures, uh, no hot ladies here, so probably not going to get that high of a score. But uh, it's some weird stopwatch-looking head dude who's underwater. 
Uh, and I guess we're just watching him drown. I'll have to read to find out. Uh, lady made out of liquid. You know, it happens. Did he even say anything about it? Oh, hell yeah, Mobius. Uh, well, you know. Sometimes there's there's aliens attacking. Uh, and yeah. I guess Heavy Metal's rendition of Poison Ivy, too. So, you know, this is probably the most Heavy Metal cover card uh, that we've pulled so far. Uh, that would definitely go into the top row. Let's see. Let's do a quick ranking. Uh, Bug Lady is... Ah, is she top row, though? All right. Hold up. New system. Johnny Boy top row. Got these guys. Uh, Lady on Bug, yeah, that's just a top row, right? I was crazy to think otherwise. This is, come on, too lewd. That's absolute bottom tier. Can't be having that in my store. Uh, clockhead dude, like there's, it's cool. I don't know what's going on there. I'm intrigued to find out more, but at the same time, I don't know if I care. Bottom row. Uh, girl rocking out with guitar. Yeah, try, mid range. I, I guess I, yeah. You know what? You're kind of right. He's right up there with Emma Stone. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Yeah. Girl rocking out with guitar. I don't know if that's doing it for me. The guitar is green. There's a girl. There's a lot of action happening up top. Um, but I don't know if I care. Bottom row. Speaking of bottom row. I mean, like, that demon in the back row that got killed. That's pretty sweet. Oh, wait. Hold up. As we get closer... There's some babe that he saved. You need that in any kind of good fantasy arts. Um, you know what? That's a, that's a solid middle tier. Yeah, the pterodactyl's sweet. They killed a demon. I would read that story. Nothing amazing, but it's definitely middle tier. Speaking of, is Shogun Lady doing it for me? I don't know. Like, that's a cool tattoo. There's a lot of nudity. She's yelling at something. Is it me? The viewer? The, the cover's torn. That's probably affecting the... Uh, the value. I don't know. I think I think low tier. Yeah, middle tier. It's middle tier. Cool style. Fair enough, Charlie. Uh, like again, it's a lady. It's cool. You know, you did you did your work with the uh, the bubbles happening there, but I don't know. It's not that interesting. Middle tier. But we got the sweet Iliad. This one's got a little bit of everything. You get your sweet Helen of Troy. This guy looking rough. We don't get to see his face, so I get to, you know, pretend that that's me. And then just a horse in the background. Uh, horses are always difficult to paint, uh, so he definitely obscured a lot of it. But, you know, he made an effort. Yeah, Iliad, top shelf. Uh, and there you have it, the official pastimes ranking. Uh, for those, again, you can't see it. We're not going to show that on TV ever again. Uh, that's at the bottom. Uh, and again, reminder. God tier is Johnny, so this one, uh, this one's, this one's off the table because it's so good. Speaking of cards that are off the table, Skeleton Babe, with a sweet see-through cover. So we've got the two fantasy renditions of, of Johnny again. Reminder: we've got Johnny on the motorcycle, and then Johnny on the top, half Garfield, half Johnny, all action, baby. Uh, are we pricing based on how much you found them interesting? Yes. Uh, since there is no uh, actual marketplace uh, to decide what the value is, I decide the value. Uh, yeah, that, Charlie, I totally forgot about that tumor. i got to get another close-up of that bad boy. That can't be good for you, whatever's happening. Uh, but the thing is, he doesn't seem face at all, so it, it surely can't be that bad. Maybe he was just born that way, but if he's not worried about it, I'm not worried about it. And you know what? He's not even worried about that that beam of light that he's just firing off into the distance. Ow, at my finger. It hurt. Ow. Um, I don't know what's going on with that motorcycle. Does he have... Hold up. Is he under house arrest? What's going on with that like ankle bracelet that he's got there? If he's under house arrest, surely he can't be driving. He has a cape, too. What is going on? Crystal Overlord. Alright, we're definitely going to have to read the back here. 
We've got uh, Baron Dark's plan to increase the power of his crystal war uh, crystal was in danger. A brilliant crossfire of energy beam uh, converged on the crystal, causing it to smoke as it took on too much power too fast. Light Star and the Legion of Light uh, had overloaded the crystal, and Dark's quest for ultimate power was in was over in a flash. Moments and missions. Uh, I'm definitely going to have to watch the, the TV show to find out what's going on with that. Uh, he's under bike arrest. He can't leave the bike. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we got like speed happening too where he can't uh, can't go too slow on the bike. Um, and then I definitely uh, I definitely feel this is me in this TV show. I got to start wearing an eye patch apparently. Uh, sweet billowing robes. It's not. If it was green robes, I would definitely be all for this. But he's got the long hair. My hair is about that long too. He's got the ear poking out. He's got that evil grin. What is this guy's name? Dagger. That's could be better. Uh, yeah. Uh, Vic. Which uh, which of these browse my wares? Which ones are jumping out at you? Maybe we can make a deal. Well, you think about that. How do y'all feel about Doctor Strange, the master of the mystic arts? Oh God, almost dropped out of my, <laughs> onto my valuable heavy metal cards. In full color, uh, Doctor Strange, gotta be easily one of my favorite uh, Marvel characters. No, yeah, he's definitely favorite Marvel character. Favorite DC character, I think we mentioned before, is Green Lantern. Favorite Marvel is Doctor Strange. His wife, Clea. Hold up. Uh, now I've actually got to do math in top row. One, two, three, four. Man, you're just going for my bottom row. One, two, three, and five. All right, let's see. So we got the bottom row. We got three and five set aside. Ah, the top row, though. We got one, two, three. I'll give you a robot lady. You could have the robot lady. Three though, that moon lady. What's going on there? Just she got armor on? No, she's just weird, like liquid metal bits of her. All right, Vic, you drive a hard bargain. You're bringing cake. I guess I can't say no to that. Exactly. Yeah. Out of the curiosity, which ones? Which are the other ones that you were gonna go for? See, you already, you already ravaged the top row pretty good. Uh oh. Find it, find it. Um, uh, what else have we got here? Yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> I'll throw in, I'll throw in Emma Stone for you. You could have that one for free. You want the forbidden one? All right, we'll throw in the forbidden one and a free Emma Stone for you. Just because it's my birthday doesn't mean that I can't also be the one giving gifts. Um, all right, the rest we'll put aside for now. Put it in the mic pile to go find its way into the mic drawer to eventually get mixed up with Pokemon cards. Next thing you know, Royce and I are having a good duel. I'm winning again. I'm, I'm looking for that grammar card that I think is gonna be the one to beat her. And bam, Poison Ivy makes her way into my deck. Oops, sorry, that's illegal. Joe Cross calls it a, a wash. I'm disqualified. And that's how I lose the Pastimes Cup. But these things happen, you know? Um, but yeah, I think last thing I'm gonna show off here is my sweet Doctor Strange. Um, uh, th this is the Marvel comic series Pocket Edition. Stan Lee presents Doctor Strange. Thanks, Stan. Uh, it's a sweet character. Uh, what this one is, is it, it is a pocket edition of, uh, it's, yeah, the first 18 original issues of Doctor Strange. Um, he was featured in Doctor Strange, uh, Strange Adventures number, uh, yeah, 110. Um, and these are the first 18 issues of my favorite Marvel character. Uh, admittedly, kind of hokey, um, these first few ones, um, not Doctor Strange, there he is. Um, boy, this, this text is real small. Uh, when 
This is a perfect bed book because I have to have this like right up on my face as I'm reading it. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but again, these are the first uh, 18 issues. Like they don't, they don't even give his actual. Um, where is it? Yeah, his actual origin until issue three. They even mention here in like this letter columns of like, uh, hey, all of you guys were big fans of Doctor Strange and wanted to hear more, uh, but we totally forgot to actually give him an origin because uh, the first issue that actually appears in, they just jump right into it. Uh, we got a dude here that's having nightmares. Uh, he can't uh, escape them, so he knows uh, that there's something supernatural going on, but he, uh, being in New York, he has heard in hushed whispers the names of Doctor Strange, so he goes to, yeah, exactly, same, same thing. Um, uh, so he goes to the good doctor uh, to try and help figure out what's wrong with him. Uh, doctor Strange astral projects into uh, his dreams, um, and in his dream state he finds this this chained hooded figure uh, that's the cause of all of this um, and it's his beyond that it's his old arch nemesis uh, Nightmare uh, which is actually pretty interesting because um, if anybody cares about the actual Marvel movies um, what is it the Doctor Strange and the something of the multiverse uh, is supposed to be they call it uh, Doctor Strange or the Marvel Universe's first horror movie um, and it's starring Doctor Strange, and uh, I believe it's going to predominantly feature uh, Nightmare as the villain because, you know, if you read Doctor Strange and if you're talking horror, Nightmare is the main dude. Also, he's really sweet. Um, uh, no, actually, Charlie, I think it was... Um, I think they, they started off do making Doctor Strange as, like, a, a, an Asian character. Uh, so it's actually kind of racist. Um, like, his eyes are always closed. Um, but hold up, Doctor Strange is in a, in a trance, and they just pull a, they pull a gun out on him. Like, would, <laughs> dude, dude tried to help you, and you just pull out a gun on him? That ain't cool. Um, uh, and then, yeah, turns out, uh, the guy was haunted by a bad business dealing that he had with, uh, some dude. He screwed him over, and, uh, his ghost was haunting him, uh, and that was the cause of it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, boy. It's uh, Stan Lee's nightmare. Um, but actually, and then, yeah, like, cut to uh, uh, issue number three of him, uh, where they actually kind of retcon it to, no, he's just an American dude. Uh, an American dude who went to um, Tibet to learn. This is actually, I something about this image. I love this image of bummy Stephen Strange. Um, this is at his low point in his life, uh, where he... His hands are broken from a car accident. Uh, if you saw the Doctor Strange movie, you kind of know the origin story of Doctor Strange. Um, you know, world-class surgeon. Look at how smug he is. Oh boy, I hope he gets his comeuppance in a one-panel car wreck uh, where his hands are now ruined. Uh, he can't practice medicine anymore, which means he can't be the world's like richest and best surgeon. Uh, so his ego is shattered. Uh, he could have become a consultant, but that would have meant that he works for somebody. Dr. Stephen Strange doesn't work for anybody but himself, so he basically becomes a weird, uh, worldly vagrant um, who eventually finds his way to Tibet uh, to try and get his hands fixed. Uh, and he does, with the assistance of the Ancient One, who is not Tilda Swinton in this one. Um, but yeah, he learns the Dark Arts uh, alongside Baron Mordo. Uh, who is this smug looking dude surely he's not an evil guy that's trying to kill the ancient one uh, in basically every issue beyond this why would that be the case um, oh hell yeah dude nightmare is so cool and it's not just because his main colors are green white and black alright it is entirely because his main colors are green white and black but no he's actually a sweet character he rides around in a cool nightmare horse like look at the, look at the castle he lives in uh, also, I'm a huge fan because uh, this is a lot of Steve Ditko's early stuff. Steve Ditko is one of my favorite uh, artists uh, who does a good job at portraying a lot of weird dimensions because, um, again, with Doctor Strange's story, he's usually traveling to different dimensions, uh, fighting different beings uh, like Nightmare, so he travels to the Nightmare dimension. But um, the different dimensions are portrayed as weird like geometric shapes, um, just cool stuff going on in the background. Uh, and I think that they do a good job of creating like atmosphere in these early ones uh, like all the smoky um, 
rooms of the uh, Sanctum Sanctorum uh, that Doctor Strange lives in. Like, check out the sweet art. We got Doctor Strange astral projecting, witchcraft in the wax museum. Surely nothing bad will happen there. <laughs> we got Baron Mordo's sweet astral projection head just basically talking a lot of yang at Doctor uh, Doctor Strange. Uh, but yeah, it gets it gets real hokey in some of these. Um, but I don't know. I am a fan of it. Uh, Thor was often featured a lot in the early Doctor Strange stuff. Uh, he would go to uh, the Journey into Mystery uh, comics. Like, hell yeah, check out that Bifrost Bridge. And then there's just Thor chilling out. Um, but yeah. Say what you will. I still think Doctor Strange is a cool character. Eyes are always a cool symbol that is used uh, often in this because of the Eye of Agamotto. We get Doctor Strange's third eye, just seeing truth. And then, yeah, eventually, like, even in the first, like, 18 issues, you get a lot of Doctor Strange's, um, the characters and stories, um, like, story beats that will follow him for basically the rest of uh, all of his series. Like, we got uh, the Dread Dormammu. Um, we get Clea, who is uh, Dormammu's daughter. Daughter or niece, something like that. A, a relation to Dormammu, who is like uh, uh, one of these like big elder demons um, that is the, the foil to Doctor Strange and a lot of later stuff. Uh, she later marries him. Uh, she, well, she becomes his student and then marries him because, come on, who wouldn't marry Doctor Strange? Let's be real here. Uh, yeah, it's just got a cool look. Like, look at that. Are you kidding me? We got the ancient one, we got Doctor Strange, and then we got Clea. All right, all right you're just lying. To, you're lying to me and you're lying to yourself, Charlie. That's. And then we got Doctor Strange and Clea on the back here. Master of the Mystic Arts, if I do say so myself. Um, yeah. Uh, I think that's just about everything that, <laughs> that I had. Um, also, not bad for me talking to myself for an hour and 45. Um, uh, any questions? Uh, homework is not due till tomorrow, so I will listen to uh, whatever anybody has to ask or anything to say. Uh, if not, I might just end it early. Um, yeah, let's get a recap of recap. Oh boy, of Vix Hall. Forbidden card. We don't need to see that anymore. Um, but we got uh, Emma Stone. We got, this might be the top tier one um, of, of the hall here is uh, Crescent Moon Lady. Uh, wait, I spoke too soon. I forgot about uh, Redhead and her cyborg lover. Uh, we got just a sweet little action movie cover of Lady looking off into the middle distance while brandishing a sweet like space revolver, space pistol? I need to know more about that gun. It's a lot of angles to it. Uh, and then Liquid Lady, I've called her. So yeah, good choices by Vic. Uh, good choices by you guys for coming out today. Uh, again, apologies uh, for those of you who wanted to see about Flash, but I like to think it was a little bit more interesting than just the Flash. Um, you know. I don't... Barry Allen is fast, but... Think he could ever match something like this? Personally, I think not. Uh, Five dollars, you say? I say fifty, Charlie. <laughs> Five dollars to stop me from peeling right here and putting it on my locker in the back room. <laughs> yeah, those skeleton warriors. How could I forget? Uh, whoa, what's going on over here? Find it. Um. Recap of the Skeleton Wars. Uh, where did I put? Oh, I already put my stuff away. Uh, what are we reading next week? Um, do we want to spoil that? Because this week we're still we still haven't gone over uh, Flashpoint. Um, but also since uh, again Friday is my birthday, uh, we've decided that this week is going to be a book of my choosing. Because uh, usually it's like Johnny and I kind of going back and forth and also uh, deciding uh, with the help of the chat what we want to read next. Uh, I am getting a spoil it from the chat. 
um, to source. Yeah, like that's one of the bummer things is, um, you know, by today I would have been showing off uh, what the next week's book is and going from there. Um, give me one second to run to grab the book. Because, uh, oh, wait, no, I think I should have it nearby. Uh, give me one moment. Ah! Johnny's swearing again. I, you know, I leave him alone for five seconds, and man, does he uh, voice some of his weirder opinions. Um, ah, oh no. Speaking of weird, I've knocked over weird science. And speaking of weird, so this week we had Flashpoint. It was, it was all right. We'll talk about it more in depth uh, tomorrow with the help of Johnny. Y'all got the Doctor Strange primer, but what if we had Doctor Strange, The Oath? Uh, this one is, what was it, it was like 2014, 2015? I forget, but um, this one is usually um, on a lot of lists of Doctor Strange. Uh, <laughs> always daddy time when we got Doctor Strange, The Oath. Um, this one is in a lot of, uh, if you were like, look up, uh, like, you know, Best Doctor Strange stories. This one is usually on there because, as as far as kind of recent Doctor Strange stuff, um, uh, it's usually listed as as being pretty up there. Um, I know that they kind of dipped into some of this stuff as part of the um, Doctor Strange movie. Like they use this as some of the inspiration of of the character and everything that's going on there. Um, but it's actually pretty neat. Uh, I was always a fan of it. It's only uh, five uh, issues. This uh, collected edition has issues one through five. Um, I was a fan of it, um, and I think that is a good kind of primer uh, for modern Doctor Strange stuff. Um, but I was talking to Johnny too um, today when I was discussing my my choice uh, with the idea of using this as a good jumping off point um, because I feel like something like this, even though it literally is the Doctor Strange origin stuff, um, I don't know how y'all feel about yet uh, like getting into like the weird kind of hokey or Silver Age stuff. I'm always a fan of it, but. Um, as far as readability or, or interest level, I don't know some of you guys for it. So uh, I feel like this is just a good one to get into for uh, showing off the good doctor. Um, and then, yeah, I guess we'll see. This is probably going to be the layout for, um, for our reviews. Uh, actually, why am I using that? We'll use the actual book. Um, I might tighten the camera up a little bit, but... Um, I feel like this would be a good way to kind of, because uh, usually, um, for those of you who watched the previous streams, we had usually Johnny, uh, Johnny on the spot over here holding the book and then kind of showing off uh, key pages or ones that we both liked. I feel like maybe kind of following along like this might be a little bit better just to kind of see it, um, you know, as we're going through it to get a better feel of the art, because I don't know about y'all, but um, the art is usually the thing that gets me most interested in a lot of these books. Uh, so even just getting to see the them from afar or getting us to get some close-ups on certain key panels or action shots uh, I think would make for more interesting TV for you guys too. Um, also we'll probably have to, uh, for legal reasons, uh, we'll probably have to like skip a few pages here and there, which is fine. Uh, we could totally do that, but, um, but yeah, let me know if you guys think about, yeah, nice try lawyers. Um, let me know if, oh, <laughs> that might be a spoiler, uh, let me know if you guys feel like something a layout like that would probably be better. Um, or if you like it more, again, like I'll see about getting a, a tighter shot on that stuff just so you can kind of see it better. Um, <laughs> you didn't see that, Charlie. Um, uh, yes, Vic, we have, uh, we still have flashpoints at the store, um, and then we still got uh, copies of Doctor Strange: The Oath. I uh, we'll talk about that tomorrow, Charlie. I do. Speaking of questions, page one. Don't worry, we're getting to it. Nice man, there's a lot of pages before page one. Who would have guessed? There are some questions that I have 
about these two panels. Uh, I had to do some looking into it. Not a fan of what I found. Uh, it basically has to do with like, we get like a quick recap of Barry Allen's origin stories in the first like page. <sighs> Comics are weird, guys. I don't know if I like them anymore. Uh, but I do like Doctor Strange the Oath. So, uh, yeah. Let me know if you guys have any other questions, um, comments, concerns. Uh, again, a recap, we will be back tomorrow. Uh, Johnny will be here. He has promised me. He said he will not let me down. Uh, he will be rejoining us to talk about flashpoints. Um, and then from there, spoilers, we will be jumping into next week, Doctor Strange, The Oath. Um, layout's nice as hell sound. Thank you. Yeah, I, I spent a lot of time, well, I mean a lot of time, uh, trying to get a layout in terms of the cameras uh, physically and then also changing things around. I might do, I've got ideas for the actual what's going on like up here and all this side stuff. Um, uh, I think John, our media guy, did it originally. Um, it's good. It's serviceable. I don't know. If, it's a lot of yellow on there, isn't there? Um, which is, you know, it's one of our colors, but um, I've got some ideas of how I might, might want to uh, uh, rearrange the actual, the actual, like, images that you're seeing there. So, uh, if I ever get time to dink around in Photoshop, I'll have something that'll pull up. But for now, uh, I think the three camera setup is pretty good, um, at least for the, the Wednesday shows. Uh, Tuesday, unless we have actual comics. Well, I mean, I guess if Tuesday we, we showed it off, um, you know, Johnny kind of was like, hey, here's a comic. This is what came out this week. Whoa, you can't do that on TV. Um, so I think the layout will be good for that too. But for now, it lets me show off all the things that are important in my life. You know, when you when you turn 30, you get some perspective in, in things in your life. You know, no longer are you interested in things like Elf and Skeleton Warriors and Heavy Metal Magazine cards. You, you see what's really important in your life. You know, like sweet. I'm missing Alakazam, which is a bummer because he happens to have two spoons. Uh, where was it? Oh no, I had it. I had it here. See, the problem is, if I keep everything in one drawer, uh, and if I'm constantly throughout the day opening and closing that drawer, uh, if it's just loose cards, those cards shift around. They don't tell you that when you're setting up your sweet, here's all my cool stuff drawer. Uh, you have to find that out the hard way. Uh, and in doing so, I have found out that I can't find my grammar card. Come on. Come on, Grimer. Got a lot of... From the past stream, we had uh, Gotharita and Gothita. We got to get you a box. I, the problem is I had a box in there, but I didn't get a chance to put the stuff in the box yet because I was too busy enjoying all this cool stuff that I got. Uh, like, there's the deck that I used to beat Royce. That's got to stay there, right? I can't throw that away. That was a, a, a game winner. Um... Oh, you know, I think I got my birthday wish early, fellas. Wabam. A, B, G, G. Always be grookey ganging. Uh, and now, I'll probably have to take another year to try and find that actual grookey gang uh, coin, because it's also somewhere in here, yeah. Knives out for grookey boys. Um... Come on. All right, well, whatever. Uh, yeah. Bidding on these items. I feel like we're just going to have to either start spending actual bits or, I don't know, maybe we'll start doing claim sales live here. Do I hear $5 for Grimer? Can my boy get a five? All these, these Instagram e-thoughts get a million likes, but can we get a $5 for my boy? 
spend two dollars in bits today on Tapped. Yeah, I saw you, Vic. Yeah. I, I forget how much a, a actual bit costs in real world dollars, but I saw that there was a lot of bits being thrown around. I always appreciate it. Hashtag bits for your boy. I'm always happy when I see bits flying around, so. I'll have to actually get a physical looker whistle that I could blow whenever I see uh, bits. <laughs> your little bitty boy. Um, yeah, no. Sweet haul. You get your heavy metals, you get your dagger. That's going to be getting put to use on streams. So we got Johnny, the Crystal Overlord. We got Johnny, the Garfield. We got Shriek. Yeah, man, it was good. Biddy Page. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, probably shouldn't be left to my own devices for too long because then it gets derailed into nonsense like this. Uh, so thank everybody for coming on out here. Uh, great haul. You know, we got probably like what? Like, we got $5 right here. We got maybe a total of $5.50 worth of value out of tonight. Uh, big winner, Elf card. You always make sure that it's not taken off by the sticker. You know, it's just crisp. No folding. Uh, I guess that's still just his foot. I don't know. I've got to find the other eight eight pieces to, to complete the puzzle. But for now, we got what we were looking for. We got the elf. Uh, bowling. Man, I, are we going to have to start watching elf on the stream? Because I need to... <laughs> I think I need to find out more about this brother can you spare a cat. Look at that. I, yeah, like that's the thing is we either need context of, I don't know, why is Elf dressed up as a leprechaun, or to be fair, do we need context more than that? Is this not beautiful enough on its own? Did they mention like what episode it's from? Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Nope. Uh, sorry, real quick, Melmac fact. Cats taste very much like hamster. I think I brought up that fact last time, but for those of you who weren't there, cats taste like hamster. Um, yeah, I think that may be it. Uh, it's 10 o'clock somewhere. Do you know where your Johnny is? Uh, hopefully he's at home watching this. It would have been nice if he said something. But uh, until then, ABGG, always be Grookey Gang, always be good nighting, guys. Is that? Uh, and until then, we'll probably be back again tomorrow at 8 p.m. Uh, Johnny actually joining us this time, not just the ghost of Johnny's past. Um, I like how, I, I don't know if I knocked this over at some point during the stream, but it looks like he is like very far on the ground. Uh, that or he just got real shorts during all this. So I will see everybody tomorrow, uh, 8 p.m. Central Time, homework on the desk, written reports, written reports on Flashpoint. Um, I want people to tell me what they thought about Barry Allen's origin story uh, and why it's so silly that lightning hitting beakers full of chemicals is the way that you become a superhero. In this day and age? I don't know, man. Tell me more about Doctor Strange instead. Alright, I'll see you guys tomorrow at 8pm sharp. Homework on the desk. Big F in the chat for Johnny. And a big A for Elf.